there, I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and I am very excited to be here with you today to share what I've had done in terms of plastic surgery procedures, in-office procedures, that kind of thing. I am just turned 64 years old last April, which isn't that far ago, maybe three or four months ago. I'll be the big 65 coming up, Medicare eligible, yay, next April. So I'm right in there, 64, almost 65 kind of age range. And before I get into anything, I just wanted to show you my outfit that I have on today. All the jewelry and outfit information is listed below the video. It's very inexpensive. It's all from Amazon. And if you're not yet a member of the 50 Plus Beauty family and are interested in all things anti-aging, then I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel and or giving this video a thumbs up. Okay, let's get into this. And first, let me tell you a little bit about how I came to YouTube. And that is when I was just about to turn 60, I was 59, just past my 59th birthday. I had looked in the mirror for about the past year and I realized that I was getting baggy and saggy. I was getting jowls, I was getting more wrinkles. And I thought, what can I do to stop this? And I was looking around on the internet and I happened to find YouTube. And I don't know why I never knew about YouTube before then because immediately I started following like Angie of Hot and Flashy and some other mature beauty YouTubers. And I started following what they said. I started using Retin-A and all different manner of skincare. And within a year or so, I was really starting to look a lot better. And just past my 59th birthday, I thought, why don't I have a YouTube channel and so I can be, you know, kind of like a guinea pig for you all, show you what I've been using that works, what doesn't work, show you the devices I use and the procedures I use both in office and at home to really help with anti-aging. And first I want to say, some of you will say, well, why don't you just age gracefully? And I get that and bless you if you can do that. I have never really been able to do that. And I know I look every minute of my 64 years old, but I do want to look the best I can for age 64. And another point of my channel is I get so tired of these beautiful celebs that when asked, what do you do to look so fabulous? They say, oh, I drink a lot of water and I stay out of the sun. Well, I know they probably do drink a lot of water and they probably do stay out of the sun, but they also do everything known to man or at least known to aesthetics and surgery procedures to look as good as they can for as long as they can. And I just don't like that because I don't know why in the world they wouldn't just be honest with us. I always tell you exactly what I'm having done because I want you to know the tools and tricks to navigating getting older in as nice a way as possible. Okay, so I don't forget any of the procedures that I've had done. I've listed them on my cell phone here. Um, hopefully I won't forget anything. Basically, again, I'm 64 years old and I've used Botox for the past 22 years on my forehead and in my crow's feet areas. And you can't really see very well in these lights, but you can definitely see, I can definitely make forehead wrinkles. The, yes, and I can make 11s too. My goal is to use enough Botox to really soften the wrinkles up there. And I did a video about my long use of Botox and I really think it is one of the best things we can do. If we want to really soften the larger wrinkles on our face, Botox is about the best there is in terms of that but I've done it in my forehead for the past 22 years. And until about six months ago, five months ago, I also did it in the crow's feet area. But then I started using the Nira laser device and it's an at-home device, which sat unused in my basement for a year because quite honestly, I never thought it could do what, what it said it would do, which is to reduce wrinkles. And amazingly enough, it is one of my favorite beauty devices as it really has greatly softened the marble mans as they call them. And they are still there. There is no doubt about it, but they are greatly softened through the use of the Nira. So I no longer use Botox there. I also use the Nira down in here, but you can tell here I still have wrinkles, but I really do think it has softened them quite significantly. And I'll link a video here or here. So if you want to check out the Nira, you can. Now I am in the middle of talking about my facial procedures, but I forgot there is something I didn't write down. And that is that my hands, I had a vein reduction process. Actually, I had sclerotherapy on my hands, the backs of my hands, maybe when I was about 50 years old, something like that. And it was the best thing I've ever had done for myself. Here is a look at my hands before and after, and it is amazing. That is one of my most popular videos on YouTube. People cannot believe the difference, but it really is the difference. I actually had it done twice. I'd forgotten that I went back to New York 
The doctor I had it done with was in Schenectady, New York. He was a licensed vein doctor. And unfortunately, he has retired, so don't ask me his name. He's no longer practicing, but it was fantastic. And I have had no fillers or anything on my hands. My hands just look pretty good once I got rid of those horrible veins. One other thing about veins, anywhere you have veins on your body that bother you cosmetically, they can be injected and very safely as long as you do it with a doctor who is well-trained in that area. Okay, let's get back into face procedures. And a lot of you say, Beth, where are your brown spots? You really have good skin. And I do have good skin. I am one of the lucky ones, I guess. I had a grandmother from down south who early on said, Beth, stay out of the sun. Use umbrellas, use hats, keep that pretty skin out of the sun. And so I really did that. So I don't have a lot of brown spots. However, when I was in my mid 40s, I did have brown spots. Even with having kind of aggressively avoided the sun, I had brown spots and I had a series of three IPLs. And IPL stands for Intense Pulsed Light. And basically it is a light laser that just feels like a rubber band against your skin. It's kind of a lunchtime procedure. She goes around and zaps your skin, all of your face and your neck with this intense pulsed light. And over about a 10 day period, your brown spots come to the surface and then they flake off of your skin like brown leaves. It is absolutely crazy. And I had it three times because they usually do it in a series of three or four. The first time was fabulous. I could not believe the difference. And then I had it again maybe six months later after that because the brown spots were kind of coming back. And so that response was fantastic. The brown spots came up and flaked off like leaves. My skin was beautiful. But then on the third time, I had a problem. And I think that was because I went to a non-qualified person. My person who had done the intense pulse light had gone out of business and so I asked an esthetician at the time who they recommended and they recommended this girl in Oklahoma who actually worked at a tanning salon. That should have been my first clue that aesthetics was really not her first line of business. She owned the tanning salon. But anyway, I went down there and I had the IPL and I drove home from Oklahoma to Kansas after having the IPL, had a lot of sun exposure and instead of the brown spots going away after the third procedure, they came back on and with a vengeance. And so then I spent the next three or four or five years using hydroquinone on my face to try to combat those brown spots. So if I have any advice to share with you, that is to make absolutely sure that when you have any of these types of procedures, whether it's a plastic surgery procedure or an in-office procedure, just make sure to do your homework and to get someone who is really qualified. Okay, then when I was about 50, I started to notice some changes, especially on my lower face. And I got a little bit of a chin here. I got a double chin. And I went to a plastic surgeon who I found on the internet in Kansas City, and he did a little bit of lipo under the chin. And, you know, it did help. It really did help. It doesn't help with jowls particularly, but it did help. I had this little pouch here and he got rid of that. However, if I had it to do today, I would not get that surgery again. I wouldn't get the lipo surgery. I would get what they call Kybella, which is where they inject the fat cells and then they shrink over time and I think they're destroyed and they go away more naturally. And so that's what I would have done now if I had it to do all over again. Okay, fast forward to age 57 and I got rheumatoid arthritis from about my 40s on and I had a rheumatologist, had all the horrible pain killing drugs and I ended up deciding that I wanted to look for some alternative means of dealing with my RA and another thing that I forgot to mention to you, I forgot to write it down, was that in my early to mid 40s, I got breast implants and they were absolutely beautiful. I was a totally flat woman after nursing two boys. I went into my first pregnancy, I was probably a B, but I came out of my second pregnancy after nursing a long time, like a long time. My breasts would not even fit an in a nearly a teen bra. That's how small they were. So I got silicone breast implants. They were absolutely beautiful. I love them. But within about five years of getting those, I started to develop the RA. And for the longest time, I didn't associate the two. I went to the rheumatologist and did that traditional RA route that they send you on which is basically a series of going to appointments and they give you one pain killing drug. And then when that one doesn't work anymore, they give you a more advanced one, which causes more side effects. I remember the last one, I got huge welts all over my chin, kind of cystic acne from it. It was just terrible. 
And so after maybe 10 years of dealing with my RA with a rheumatologist, the standard medical treatment, I started researching natural treatments, more natural treatments. And it's too much to go into during this video, but I'll link a video below so you can see all of the things I tried to combat my RA. But rolling forward to make a long story short, I realized that I thought that instead of rheumatoid arthritis, I actually had breast implant disease, silicone disease. And basically I'd had one set of silicone implants for five years, had them removed within a year, I had no pain. And then I thought, oh gosh, Beth, you know, you have no implants, you have no pain, but you're very disfigured. I looked like an empty baggie with nothing inside. And so I thought, well, I'll just get implants again, but I'll get saline implants. Well, saline implants are encased in silicone. I did that. And within a year of the saline implants, I was having the RA symptoms again. I realized I needed to have those taken out, but I was afraid to have them taken out because I was so disfigured. And that prompted me to go to the internet and I discovered breast fat transfer. And I'll link a video about that entire experience below so you can see that. But basically I ended up going out to North Carolina and having a breast fat transfer. And that is basically where they take your fat from different body parts. In my case, it was my tummy and thighs. They lipoed it out of my tummy and thighs and they put it in my breasts. And before I had that surgery, I was getting some nasal folds here, some deeper lines. And I called his wife, that was who I was dealing with, you know, when I was asking the doctor about getting this all set up. And I said, could he take some of that fat and put it in my nasal folds? And she went off to talk to him and she called me back and she said, well, that's included. And I thought that was a strange thing to say, that that was included in a breast fat transfer. Well, then I went out there to have the surgery and they put you under during that surgery and I woke up and I had some really nice breasts. But I also realized that not only had he put fat in my nasal folds, he had also put fat, injected it into my cheeks. And I was horrified and not at all happy about it because I think it's this cheek, yes. It's a little bit bigger than this cheek to this day. And that has been years ago, I think seven years ago, somewhere in there when I had that done. And the good thing about having fat injected is that it always shrinks away. A certain amount of it does go away. So at first I looked like a chipmunk. I was terribly overfilled and I absolutely hated it, but now I can deal with it. And sometimes I'll get comments on my channel, Beth, you're really overdoing the cheek filler. You look terrible. And I have to say, it gives me a little pang of pain because I don't like them either, really, but I do deal with them. I wish viewers could understand that I did not do this to myself on purpose. It was my fault because I should have really clarified things better with that surgeon. I think he just truly misunderstood his wife's question because apparently he does something where he injects fat all over your face if you want. He did not do that with me, but he did my cheeks and my nasal folds. So that is the story there. And I guess the lesson out of that is make absolutely sure that you and the doctor are on the same page and that you both know exactly what he or she is going to be doing. Okay, at age 61, I had a problem in that I had a Mohs surgery right here. I basically have a scar from here to here because, and it's a long story, and I'll link my video about my Mohs surgery experience below. To make a long story short, I went to a dermatologist because I had a weird kind of a growth thing right here on my cheek. And she immediately said, it's skin cancer and you have to get it removed. She recommended that I contact a Mohs surgeon because supposedly they do the best looking scars and take the least amount of tissue. And so I did research and I found a Mohs surgery doctor who was located in Spokane, Washington. And so I flew there and had him do this and I wasn't really happy with his results. In fact, I ended up having to go to another plastic surgeon a year later and have this scar revised because it really didn't look good. It was very bumped up and now it looks much, much better. And I'll talk about that surgeon in just a minute because if I ever get a facelift, I will go to this one surgeon that revised the scar. He is amazing. One thing positive though, that that surgeon in Washington did for me is that I have stretch marks on the front of my thighs. And now as a result of this surgeon, you almost can't even see them. When I went there, he was doing the most surgery to remove the lesion and give me a nice little scar. But he also had a laser and it was a fully ablative laser. It's the only time I've ever had a fully ablative laser. And a fully ablative laser totally burns off the outside of your skin. Then it can regrow, regrow new collagen, that kind of thing. And he did it on my stretch marks on my thighs. And that probably cut the look of those stretch marks down 
maybe 60, 65%. It was amazing. And so even though I had to have this scar recut and I wasn't happy with the results there, I have to admit I would do it all over again because I'm so happy that my stretch marks hardly show now. And in the comment section, a lot of you assume that I've had fillers. And of course, I did have the fat filler, so I guess you're right in that way. And I did have a little fat put in there. But other than that, I have no fillers anywhere on my face except my lips. And I absolutely love my lip fillers. And I know some of you probably won't love them. And they are getting a little old right now. I've probably had these over a year. And I think the top might be a little bit small, but I'm a little afraid to go in there. I don't like that trouty, pouty, overfilled look. I really don't want that. And quite honestly, my husband to this day does not like them. But here is a picture of me before I had any lip fillers. And as you can tell, my lips were very small and actually very misshapen. And I really prefer the look of a little more filled lip. And this is a temporary filler. It's a Restylane filler. And if I ever get to the point that I no longer want the lip fillers, they're temporary and they do have a chemical that can remove the filler. So I'm very happy about that. Now, let me share with you what I intend to get done in the future. And let me say ahead of time, please be kind in the comment section. If you don't agree you know, with what I'm doing or my plans or whatever, if you're going to say something, say it in a nice way. Everybody has their own path with regard to this. I admire people who go the complete opposite direction and do nothing at all. And I also admire people who use everything they can and look great. And I have to say, I hope to be more on that side because I kind of feel like it's kind of like an analogy of an old car. If you have a 50 year old car and it gets some door dings and you really like that car, you're going to pay the money if you've, if you've got it to pull those door dings out of your car and maybe repaint it, make it look as good as possible. And that's exactly how I feel about my face and my body. It's kind of like I'm an old car and if I have some door dings or, you know, I've been through a wreck, something like that, and I think it would help to have an in-office procedure or a plastic surgery procedure, I am totally fine with that. Now, fast forward to today, and it is about the 1st of August. I think it's August 2nd. But at the end of this month, I'm actually going to fly to Arizona, to Tucson, Arizona, to see Dr. Maloney. And he is the man, he's a Harvard-trained plastic surgeon, and he is the man that reworked that scar, and he did a beautiful job. You can hardly see it. And I was so impressed with him. Not only is he Harvard-trained, but most all the procedures that he does, unless you want to go under, he does it with you totally awake. He injects local anesthesia and gives you Valium. And he and his nurse stand over you and they're talking to each other. They're talking to you. As you have the procedures done, he's saying, smile a little bit. Let me see how you move this way. Why don't you go ahead and talk with me? And that's how he even does his plastic surgery in terms of like facelifts. And when I was doing my research on who to get to revise this scar, I did a lot of research on Dr. Maloney and I saw probably a hundred different results that he produced and they were phenomenal and his reviews are amazing. So basically what happened is I called his office to get a little consult and right now he does consults either through Zoom or through pictures. And so they said, send us a bare faced picture and tell us the area that you're interested in improving. And so I took off all my makeup and I sent him a picture of myself but basically what I'm going to have done at the end of this month is I'm going to have my eyes done, my upper eyes done, not my lowers, but my uppers. And it's called a blepharoplasty. And basically they remove the hooded lids here. And the reason that I'm getting my upper eyes done is basically because I am getting some hooding here. And to help with that, I was putting just the tiniest bit of tretinoin on my upper eyelids but I realized that it was making my eyes feel more dry. And so I stopped doing that. I stopped the tretinoin just right here. And when I started doing that, my eyes got more and more hooded and I just didn't like it. And I thought, I'll just go ahead and take care of that. And there's a secondary issue that this surgery may not take care of. In fact, Dr. Maloney said he's not sure at all if it will, but basically one of my eyes is so hooded that that eye is appearing a lot smaller. And you can't really tell that much. I guess it's this eye. I guess you really can tell that much. But I'm hoping that when he does the upper eyelids that that will help balance out the size of my eyes. 
I don't know if that's the case or not, but I will be doing a video about that and showing you. But if you're not a subscriber to my channel and you'd like to receive email notification when I post that video, then just go ahead and click that bell when you subscribe to my channel. And when I was asking him about my eyes, I also asked him about my neck, if there was any way to get a little bit of a neck lift. And he said, Beth, really no. He said, some plastic surgeons will tell you they're doing a neck lift, but it's really a complete lower facelift. And we talked about it, and I'm just not quite ready for a complete lower facelift. I think it may make me look too pulled. Um, certainly, I would love that. I think that is absolutely great. It is a lot better. It's a big improvement. But I am starting to get some jowling, and I just think it's a little too early. You know, I, I really only want to do this once. And I would like to do it maybe when I'm 68, 69, somewhere in there. I want to do it when I get enough jowling that not only will it improve the neck, but it will really improve the lower face as well. And I am not one of these people who says I will never get a facelift. I know that I probably will. Certainly if I live long enough, I will. And I will take you with me every step of the way so you can go through that process with me, but it won't happen at the end of August. However, I will be showing you the results of my blepharoplasty. Can hardly say that. I'm really excited about that. And in that video, I'll show you myself right after the surgery and I'll take you on a daily journey so you can see the entire healing process. Okay, that was my update on the plastic surgery procedures I have had done. And if you have had in-office procedures, used home devices, had surgery even, if you have had any of those things that have really helped you, I would love it if you would share the information in the comment section below the video. That way we can all learn together what works and doesn't work. And if you're interested in finding out what I did to help stop my hair loss that I was getting pretty extensively, I hope you'll stick around on my channel and watch my 19 months results using the iRestore.